Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Digital Health and Wearables series. Today I have another fantastic guest for you, but before I go ahead, make sure you subscribe to the amazing content on the channel and let me acknowledge our partners, the serious partner Salesforce, leaders in healthcare and life science and our global partner Spirit Digital. But go straight to the guest, I'm extremely excited to have Razu Shrestha, is the Chief Strategy and Transformation Officer and also Executive Vice President at Atrium Health. Razu, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to finally speak with you today on your, on your amazing platform. Razu, I'm delighted to be here. We kind of follow each other uh, for some years. I know you very well without knowing. We nearly crossed lines in Germany, but the day I was there, you were not there, and then we came and spoke the, the, the next day, two years ago. But anyway, fantastic to be here. I'm going to go straight to the questions. Is that okay? Yes, please. Let's do it. So the first question that I have for you is, the pandemic created a surge in virtual and digital health adoption. Uh, do you see this trend continuing or will the healthcare industry revert back pre-pandemic ways? You know, it's such an important question. Um, the pandemic, in my mind, has made it painfully clear that digital health is a necessity of our next normal. Um, and without continued digital health innovation, we're left vulnerable. So the, the pandemic has made it very clear. You know, what's interesting is uh, in the last year and a half, it's also revealed to us the fault lines and the silver linings of the healthcare system. The fault lines are, are clear. You know, it's the poor public health infrastructure, the information silos, we talk about digital health and the inequities and the mistrust um, from disadvantaged and vulnerable populations. Um, and so, you know, clearly there are fault lines, but there are silver linings as well. And, um, you know, we were quick to innovate with, um, with effective development, uh, developments of treatments, with vaccines. Um, and, and so the, the, the nimbleness with which we were able to develop these things were, were pretty dramatic as well. And then we also saw a silver lining with consumers who um, you know, check COVID dashboards and statistics in their local areas, whether you know, it's in Europe or here in America, they screen themselves for COVID symptoms, they access therapy and healthcare from their devices, and, and they regulated stress and, and more using apps and other digital health platforms. So I think it's a really good mix of, of fault lines that clearly became accentuated, but also these silver linings that we really need to dig deeper into. And that's where the opportunity really lies. You know, we saw engagement uh, reflected in the digital health marketplace with, I think in 2020, the digital health funding hit $14.1 billion in venture capital. And in 2021, it has already surpassed, um, you know, the, the 2020 total fundings. Even in the first half of 2021, the total of the 2020 fundings has been surpassed. So I think, you know, there are tremendous opportunities for, it, for us here to not revert back to the pre-pandemic era, for us to really build on the successes of those silver linings that I referenced earlier and, and to sustain that momentum in this next normal forward. Sure. Thank you for that. I fully agree with you. Really, the pandemic highlighted the gaps in what we're supposed to be doing and give us all as a big push forward. Thank, thank you so much. The second question that I have for you, Razu, is when you think about the future of healthcare, what role do you see digital health playing? Yeah, it's a really good question as well. Um, you know, when I think about digital health, it rolls up um, so easily through our tongues, you know, but I, I really think it's not just digital health. It is digital in health. And that's an important uh, distinguishing element because, you know, for the longest time, we've been doing digital in healthcare, meaning we've been rolling digital solutions out, replicating analog workflows, but also, you know, the conversation we just had around the pandemic where it's accentuated the, the gaps between the haves and the have-nots. And there are lots of you know, elements out there, lots of folks uh, who 
you know, maybe do not have access to all of the different elements of digital that the rest of the world actually does have. So the digital in health approach, I think, is the right approach. And where we need to really focus in on is how do we not just do digital, but really be digital, right? Doing digital is really about saying, all right, you know, here's the analog workflows and let's just digitize them. Being digital is thinking in, in zeros and ones. It is, it is reimagining workflows, reimagining experiences in the digital language, in a digital culture. And I think that's really uh, what will enable uh, for us to uh, embrace these digital models and humanize the care that we're actually um, pushing forward with. Razu, fantastic points there. And the world is digital, isn't it? Do everything we do on our phones, the shopping, everything else, our behavior is very digital. And I think if we translate that to digital healthcare, creating digital pathways and treatments and everything, we are on a, we are on a good path. But thank you so much for that. I, I love that analogy, you know. Uh, the third and last question that I have for you is what you're doing at Atrium Health to make your vision a more digital future reality. Can you share some specific examples, please? Uh, sure. So let me let me give you three quick examples. One in particular is our Atrium Health Hospital at Home program. You know, through the thick of the pandemic, uh, in just a week, uh, right at the beginning, we're able to pull together this multidisciplinary team across our organization and really create a, a platform that has received national recognition in how we were able to create this hospital at home program. And, um, and, and you know, at the end of 2022, uh, 2020, excuse me, 51,000 patients had been admitted to the hospital at home program. And what this is, is essentially saying, hey, we're gonna triage our patients. We're gonna use the elements of digital and remote patient monitoring, uh, at home monitoring kits and virtual support, but we're gonna treat them where they are actually at home. So these are patients who are not severe enough to be um, in the ICUs and don't need to be in the hospitals and we can treat them in the comfort of their homes. So tremendous innovation. We see a lot of this then being built out into my second example, which is our connected care everywhere strategy. And that's a, uh, that's a specific play that we've been putting in place to, to broaden our aperture. Because in the healthcare industry, uh, I believe one of the biggest challenges is that we've been so focused in on the episodic, fragmented, disconnected care, and we need to really move ourselves uh, through our connected care everywhere strategy to always on 24 seven pervasive connected care. So think of a digital guardian angel that's nudging you towards leading your best life possible. So it's not just the episodic care, but really this notion of connected care everywhere and through technologies, uh, AIs, uh, capabilities, we're able to really look at, you know, three core elements of engage me, hear me and know me, right? So really get into the, the nuances of how do we really understand our consumer and have more of the pervasive always on connected care. And then last but not least is um, really around social impact. Um, you know, at Atrium Health, our mission is to improve health, elevate hope and advance healing for all. And that for all part of that mission statement is something that I think is a big calling, not just for us at Atrium Health, but really for the industry overall. And uh, when we think about digital health, I think our biggest calling really is to leverage digital to close in on the gaps between the haves and the have nots. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm here in the city of Charlotte here in the Southeast of the United States, and we're one of the fastest growing cities in North America, the second largest financial hub in the country yet we are number 50 in Charlotte uh, for upward mobility, meaning if you're born poor in the region, chances are you're gonna remain poor. And you know, that is really emblematic of what's wrong with healthcare uh, in the United States and perhaps globally as well. So leveraging digital health to close in on those gaps and really create digital health uh, for all, um, that is, I think, a big calling for us as well. Razu, thank you so much. Fantastic examples there. Let me congratulate you on your work, but also I know you are a busy individual. I appreciate you and I'm very grateful that we are doing this. We kind of have similar connections, do similar things, and I feel like I know you for a few years. But anyway, I'm extremely uh, happy that you were able to do this. And we come to the end of the 
the episode. I finish all my my episodes with one last question. It's not really a question. It's called one minute of fame. Okay, so you can talk about anything whatsoever: digital health, professional, atrium health, personal life, your family, a- anything whatsoever. So to finish off and round up, over to you. One minute of fame. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate this platform that you've created and and the message that you continue to profess to the rest of the industry here. You know, in that one minute that I have, um, what what I'll do is I, I you know this is a calling. This is not just a calling for me. You know, as a physician who's really embraced informatics and innovation and strategy, but a calling for all of us collectively. And uh, you know, here at Atrium Health, um, you know, as I mentioned to you, the uh, mission statement of improving health, elevating hope, and advancing healing for all is one that we're really proud of. But what I'd love to do is to make this a calling for all of us collectively across the industry. So come join us in this journey. You know, follow me uh, on my Twitter account. Uh, you know, uh, at Razu Shrestha. You know, follow us here at Atrium Health. Come join us in this journey. We're going to be doing some remarkable things uh, in the next couple of years as we're building out. You know, the first of its kind um, medical school, the most innovative medical school. Uh, on this side of the pandemic, you know, this is the second campus of the Wake Forest School of Medicine and Charlotte's first four-year medical school. We're going to embed AI, digital um, uh, health, uh, design thinking, entrepreneurship as core facets of the curriculum. Uh, this is also an ecosystem play, and I encourage all of you to really explore what that ecosystem building could really look like as well uh, in service of that mission that I mentioned earlier. So thank you for, for that opportunity. Razu, thank you so much. What a way to finish. Let me thank you again. And uh, yeah, I'm delighted I'm going to round up now. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. So to all our viewers, make sure you subscribe. Thank you for following us. I'm going to put uh, the Twitter links and the LinkedIn to connect with Razu. As you see, he's got a big vision and mission and open to connect. Make sure you connect with him and let me acknowledge our series partners Salesforce, connect with them and Spirit Digital to round up. And I'll see you all next week.